Office of Naval Research at the Department of Defense, the Best Manufacturing Practices Program, represented by Ernie Renner and Anne-Marie Suprise. Thank you. In 1985, business as usual in the Navy's acquisition programs was in need of some fundamental changes. There was very little sharing of manufacturing practices among contractors, even among those that were working on the same systems and products. For some time before that, a vision had been forming in the mind of one of the Navy's senior engineers on how to solve this growing problem. That vision was based on the conviction that we had the talent, know-how, and wherewithal right here in the <coughs> United States to build products of the highest quality. And it could be done on time at reasonable cost and still turn a profit. If we could just get companies to voluntarily share, even competitors, what they were doing best, we could solve the endless cycle of reinvention that was resulting in poor quality products with increasing costs and ever lengthening delivery schedules. The idea of getting companies to share production floor practices was at that time not only novel, it was revolutionary because it required a complete break with the past. To take hold, the idea needed a vehicle to carry it from theory to practice, to demonstrate that it was not only doable, but that it would be to everyone's benefit. That vehicle, the BMP survey process, is a unique set of procedures that are simple, straightforward, and work like a well-oiled machine. What's the formula for the BMP survey? The company controls what it shares. It's conducted on site by an impartial team of experts, and it's not just a briefing. It's a shop floor, kick the tires, see the technique or practice demonstrated. So vision plus vehicle <coughs> resulted in a cultural change where today people are anxious to share, where the government industry relationship is one of partners, not adversaries, and the government is seen as an honest broker. We knew the approach would work if only we could get an industry's cooperation. <clears throat> At first, our idea to visit companies and validate their best practices was met with skepticism. Why would a company want to share their secrets? Finally, we convinced Litton Industries to host the first survey. And finally, word got out that BMP was truly an attempt to help industry become more efficient. The real value of the BMP program became apparent after about six surveys, <clears throat> when participating companies started telling others about their positive experience. The news started spreading, and we got more requests for surveys than we could handle. The feedback from industry was encouraging. Even though it was random, we learned of companies saving money, solving problems, and improving quality, all a result of BMP. The program was growing rapidly. Government organizations, academic institutions, and industry began providing survey team members at no cost to BMP. <clears throat> They're willing to provide their brightest and most experienced people to go on surveys because we provide them an opportunity to witness firsthand best practices and action that they can institute in their organizations. The success story started flowing in, <clears throat> but we didn't know how beneficial the program was until we developed detailed metrics to measure the full impact. The results were outstanding, but had we really addressed the problem? We knew of many other attempts to reduce defense spending and improve quality had failed. Was BMP different? What makes BMP different is the fact that we give everyone ownership. All the information is made available in hard copy in our website. BMP opened an opportunity for all to share with each other and benefit from this collection of knowledge. BMP is indeed a valuable resource within government and industry. When we measured the benefits in 1997, we found that BMP helped defense and commercial industry reduce the price of goods and services and improve quality and delivery time by about 5%. Based on feedback from our customer base, we can document that BMP has saved industry more than $6 billion since the program was established. Considering that funding for the BMP is only $2 million a year, this is a fantastic return on investment for the taxpayer. The real test of something's effectiveness and significance is when others imitate what you are doing. The BMP methods and tools have been imitated, adopted, and adapted by the federal, academic, and commercial communities. In addition to other Navy activities, BMP is being used in a variety of other programs, Army, Air Force, University of Maryland. The Department of Education, Future Farmers of America, uses the BMP survey process to capture best agricultural educational practices. And they're also planning to use the BMP tools for the storage and distribution of these best practices on a national level. Little did anyone think at that beginning point over 12 years ago that what was started from a whole new attitude, approach, and expression, best practices, that that phrase and the method of operating embodied in it would become so often repeated, so deeply internalized, 
that it is now synonymous with doing things well and succeeding, not only in manufacturing, but in a whole realm of industries and endeavors. <coughs> Mayor Hatcher. The program obviously depends heavily on the willingness of companies to share. Uh, and I just wonder, how do, you, how do you get them to do that? How do you, uh, what did you do? Did you threaten them? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't actually threaten them. Initially, there was a lot of resistance because of the stigma of government coming into industry. It was not going to be a pretty picture when they left. After about three surveys, they realized that we were indeed a proactive program. Our primary interest was to find out what do we do very well in this country and how can we encourage others to use that information. We didn't even have to really do a lot of advertising and promoting it after about six surveys because companies started talking to each other. Today, voluntarily, people come to us, companies, asking for surveys. David Osborne. I wanted to ask you about the, some of the data you presented on uh, quality improvements, um, uh, delivery schedule improvements, uh, price uh, reductions, and so on. In this kind of area, um, it's always hard when you survey companies to determine uh, whether those improvements came 100% from this intervention or whether it was a mix of factors. You run into this in economic development all the time. You know, economic development programs measure jobs created. Well, you know, if you really look into it, you know, the, so the jobs were created, yes, the loan helped or, or whatever intervention it was helped, but there were other factors. Uh, how do you know uh, that, that these improvements were because of this intervention um, as opposed to this intervention helped, but there were three or four other things going on that, that uh, also drove the improvements? We, the way we worded our questions to our customer base, we were asking them specifically, how has the BNP program helped you? And we asked them in specific areas such as uh, reduction in price, improvement in delivery or quality. And we had a number of examples that we were asking them to provide us, not that we would hold them to it or come back and audit them. Was every bit of it attributed to the program? I couldn't say that it was, it probably wasn't. But we've gotten enough success stories over the years to tell us that there was a tremendous amount of value so that we went out in 1997 and did the metric study. We used the website questionnaires, questionnaires we mailed to individuals on our mailing list, and we had one-on-one -on -one conversations with them. And we've had numerous testimonies from different companies we've worked with stating how just the knowledge that they've obtained by looking at what we've seen elsewhere, implementing that within their company has saved a lot of money or solved problems. Yeah, Ben Weber. Philosophical question for you. If, if, if I mean, this program is replicable, it seems to me, across the the spectrum of government agencies that deal substantially with private sector companies. Maybe uh, you're in a unique position, but not, not you're in a dominant position there, but not a unique one. Should those of us that worry about such things get nervous that if you succeeded in replicating this program pretty broadly, you'd give the federal government really an inordinately heavy hand in determining best manufacturing practice? Could it become a tool that, 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 that doesn't achieve what, what you guys are achieving, but that actually starts dictating and maybe limiting the flexibility of the marketplace to respond, or is that just a, I a groundless I, worry? I, I recognize your concern, but I think just the opposite is true. I think, if anything, this gives industry the broader control, because they're the ones that come to us and share. They're the ones with the willingness to put this information on the World Wide Web so that others can look at it and they can call one another. We do an abstract of what the best practice is. It's not a recipe. If you want to know the details of a best practice and the methodology behind it, there's an industry point of contact for every best practice. And you call that person and you talk to them and you find out. At the same time, they may say to you, well, I'm willing to share this cookbook with you, what are you doing in the area of solderability or producibility or something like that? Jack. How do you get Microsoft to do this? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, sir, but if you can help us, we would appreciate it. <laughs> We'd love to do a survey there. Have you, have you had any difficulties with antitrust? Yes, sir. The shipbuilding industry in the United States has mm -hmm. been reluctant over the years, but we're now having great success there. I visited Electric Boat last week, and they're looking at having us do a survey of their facility in March 1999. Antonio? Um, why could not this be done 
done by the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, does the government have to do this? It's a good question. We have what we call strategic planning meetings at various times, and when the industry came into our last one, which was about two years ago, we asked them about portions of this going to non-government entities. They did not like the idea because they said, because there's a certain amount of purity, if you believe it or not, of it being a government operation. Mm -hmm. Because we were thinking about, we could do so much more if it was a not-for-profit and they could bring money in from the people that we're working with. But they thought that keeping it a government organization gave it a lot of credibility that it would not have through some other organization. Well, I'm